Hi everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and this is the final part in our current look at some Go7 Gaming custom inserts. If you missed the first parts, I'll put links to those in the description of this video. And once again, at the end of this one, we're gonna have another contest to give away some Go7 Gaming products. This time around, I want to look at some inserts that I thought had some unique storage capacities. Let's begin with Arcadia Quest. To provide a little context for this game, Arcadia Quest was first released on Kickstarter and it was very successful and is now available in retail. In retail, you can pick up the base set, which is here on the bottom, as well as this expansion, Beyond the Grave. And there was also this small box expansion that was released during the Kickstarter and it was an exclusive and there were several plastic upgrade components along with many additional figures that you could pick up. Several of those individual figures are now also available through retail. I wanted to make it clear that I have all of the components for Arcadia Quest, including everything that came through the Kickstarter and the upgraded components, and everything fits in these two boxes. So if you have anything less than that, you can be certainly sure everything's going to fit and perhaps most interestingly, you'll notice the box covers fit all the way down. So let's take a look at the inserts that are managing all this material. So here's the base box, and I've removed the lid. And how you organize your contents might be different than how I'm doing it. You'll notice I have the quest sheets for both the base game and the expansion here within the main box. I'll just remove those. And inside, I also have the campaign book for the base game, the rule book, and underneath of that, I have, well, my own little player guide that I created, and then the sheets for the different players. Bobby, the owner of Go7 Gaming, did something quite interesting, I thought, when he designed this insert. You'll notice the dividers that separate these miniatures are sloped down, and that allows you to put a piece like this graveyard into this area, which would otherwise, if it was sitting flat, would stick up and cause the box cover to lift. But this way, it sits down just enough that it can be flush with this area of the insert. One of the challenges for players of a game like Arcadia Quest is that it's meant to be played really as a campaign, where each time that you sit down to play, you'll be looking for specific figures, specific enemies for the quest that you're currently working on. I don't know about you guys, but originally I just had these all in a couple of boxes and baggies, and so I had to dump everything out and then try to find the components I was looking for. But now that they're all separated like this, it's very easy to find the miniature that I'm looking for and just pull it out and leave everything else intact. So this layer here comes off, and underneath you'll see there's even more miniatures. This one pulls out as well. And here we have a box for Arcadia Quest tokens and dice. This is actually double layered, and we'll take a look at this in more detail in just a moment. The game comes with a variety of cards for when you're setting up your quest, and that's something else you need to keep separate if you want to make setting things up easier, but that's taken care of with this insert. Here we have all the different quest cards in their own tray, and underneath we have these different sections. So here, all of the hero cards, and then behind that, all of the different monster cards, but there's sections for each level. So if you're playing a level two game, pull out these monsters and find the ones that you're looking for. This tray here is separate and for the smaller cards, so these would be like the various different equipment upgrades that you can collect, uh, death curse cards, and that sort of thing. Down here you can see some dice and also some extra guild tokens. One aspect of having all the Kickstarter components is that I had to split up some of the contents between a couple different sections. You'll see the rest of the dice and guild markers in a moment. And then in this area here is spots for all of the doors and walls. Going back to the main area of the box again, I just want to show you. We have these large areas for the bigger miniatures, but then this wall is cut out so you can put your hand in and then easily pull out all of the tiles. And these are the tiles from the base game as well as everything included with the expansion beyond the grave. And all of that goes perfectly flush so that you can put the boxes on top. But if you don't have the expansion, there's these little spacers here as well to allow you to put those other components on top and they float above so they don't rest directly on the tiles. Remember this box we pulled out earlier, it's actually two parts that you can pull away like this. And this will allow you to store all the various tokens and bits that come with the game, like gold and wound, the colored bases, the various guild tokens, and the dice. Now you saw in the insert I had some additional dice and guild tokens in another area and that's again simply because I have some of the extras that came with the Kickstarter like the colored dice and the full 3D tokens for the guild markers. But either way there's space for everything. 
Even this section that we pulled out earlier for storing miniatures has a bottom layer that can be revealed for storing extra items, maybe future expansion elements. Right now I just have some dividers that I'm not currently using in the insert here stored for potential use later. Once again, this base box has more room in it than is necessary for what normally comes with the retail version of the game. So once you start picking up some of those extra heroes or expansions, you're going to have room to grow. So here's the insert for the Beyond the Grave expansion. On top, I have the manuals and the quest book, once again, and then inside. Primarily, we're looking at storage for the miniatures because the majority of the items are going to be in the base box, the tiles, tokens, and so on. I actually left a number of the cards from the expansion in this box because I haven't played the base game all the way through, and once I have, and I've played the expansion, I'll know the components well enough to put them all together and not worried about being confused if I wanted to play them separately again. This layer here comes out and underneath more room for more miniatures. Some of them I've double stacked here and that's just because they're similar miniatures but as you can see there's actually room if I had wanted to separate them out I could have. One thing I don't have for Arcadia Quest that was released during the Kickstarter was the special Guildmaster box and it would have had a cover you know similar to this with different art. And that was meant to store the many different miniatures that were made available during the campaign. As you can see, I don't need a separate box because everything fits into the other two boxes just fine. But there's also a special insert that Go7 Gaming created for that box if you have it to again store and separate your miniatures. As you guys know, on my series, I don't review games, I don't give opinions on them because I don't think I can evaluate fun for other people. But when it comes to gaming accessories like this, I don't have any problem gushing because I'm talking about something that either does its job or it doesn't. And I think these inserts are fantastic. And they certainly do their job and they make setting up the game, storing it and putting it away so much easier. Now listen, I understand custom inserts are not gonna be for everyone. They're an added expense, especially when you look at potential shipping charges. But if there's a game that you love playing over and over and over again, something like this can really facilitate that gameplay and might be worth that expense for you. But let's put aside Arcadia Quest for a moment and take a look at another great insert for Seven Wonders. What's great about this insert is that this isn't just Seven Wonders, and again, I'm showing you this angle so you can see the box covers all the way down, but this is Seven Wonders with all of the expansions. I didn't actually have all the expansions for Seven Wonders, but when I heard they could all fit in one box, I decided to order them just to see for myself. So in here I have the Leaders expansion, the Cities expansion, the base game, and the most recently released Babel, Babel, Bobble, whatever it's called, expansion. And the extra separate pack of wonders that you can pick up along with the Catan promo. There may be another pack of expansion wonders, I'm not sure. So they may not fit in here, but there is additional space on top for more. If you're not someone who keeps these score pads. So the eighth wonder is obviously this insert. We've got separate sections for a variety of the tokens. Again, you can just pop these on the table and people can play right out of them. There's more here on the bottom. These also can be removed. We have all these wonders that you can just reach in here because of the cutouts and pull out as well. And here you find spaces for the tiles that come with the Babel expansion. There's a variety of those. And underneath you can see here some of the other pieces as well. Not to mention, of course, we have areas for the cards. Very important element of the game. And these have dividers. You can organize them along with the expansions as you see fit. Regardless of what you think of these custom inserts, I think you have to appreciate the talent that goes into designing something as functional as this. All right, so for the last insert, we're gonna take a look at Suburbia. I already removed the box cover, but I think you can see there's plenty of room for everything to fit inside and for the cover to go all the way down. So I'll just remove these pieces including the seal of purchase, which is very important. Don't lose this because actually can't think of any reason why you need to keep this. All right, these other components will pull out and inside this is the main area for storing the things that come in the game. You can see we have lots of room for expansions. These hex tiles are a big component of the game and the dividers here also have these sort of sloped bars. I don't know if you can see them here, but they, they cup and fit to the, the, uh, the shape of the hex to hold them in place, which is really neat. We have the first player token sitting inside of here. And these dividers, you can pull out and move around as you see fit. We also have a section here. This actually is removed. There's a spot for you to slip your finger in and pull out. We're gonna look at this in just a moment, but underneath we can see some player trays as well. Once again, we have a slick lidded container for storing and organizing some of the smaller bits and pieces. 
And as usual, this is something you can just pop out of the box and on the table and just play straight out of. You can probably tell I like the sections of the inserts that have those separate boxes for storing bits. And you can get those separate from the inserts as well. Here's a bit box that Go7 Gaming made as a nice little token of appreciation to us here. It has Watch It Played etched in the top. And this lid slides off and then there's room for, well, whatever you want, like a deck of cards maybe, various different tokens that would go with that game. Maybe you want to store some dice. It's whatever you can think of. They also offer a variety of gaming accessories as well, including acrylic colored bits to replace tokens in other games or these which can act as replacement stands. Think of Game of Tokyo. If your stand is no longer fitting the monster, you can get one of these, slip the monster into this bit, which will hold it into place. Either way, I hope you enjoyed seeing some more inserts and product accessories from Go7 Gaming. And thanks to Go7 Gaming for supporting us during last season's fundraiser. This series exists and continues because people continue to financially support it. I certainly appreciate that. And I love when it's a company whose products I can enthusiastically support and share with you guys. So if you'd like to, you can go to their website at go7gaming.com. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. And I have a bit box of theirs to give away. Not this one. I'm keeping this one. But I have another one. It uh, is a little smaller. It doesn't have Watch It Played printed on it. But if you'd like to enter in the contest for that, go to the description of this video. And there you'll find a link. At the link, enter your name, your email address, and the code word. And the code word is the Go7Gaming Twitter account without the at symbol. You have it until May 31st, 2015. And if you donated during our last fundraiser at the level that enters you into all of our contests, you're automatically entered. You don't have to do anything. But until the next episode, thanks for watching. <laughs>